Hi guys and welcome to my latest video. Now as you can see I moved from desktop to this arrangement here because I'm having a little bigger and chunkier deck to review today and it's SMSL M400. It's actually on the higher end of their offering costing around 800 bucks if I'm correct and it's a very interesting device and then quickly going to go through connectivity features and specs here so we can actually move to the most important part and that's sound quality. So let's talk about connectivity first. So as you can he see here on the back, there's all sort of digital inputs that you could ever need. So we have USB, optical, coaxial, and also I squared S over H DMI port, which is not really common with DACs at this price range. Regarding outputs, again, very rich selection. We have single-ended outputs like your standard RCA connectors, but also balanced XLR connectors. And uh, this is also a preamp. You can use it as a DAC. That means basically that outputs are fixed they are around 2 volts in, on single-ended outputs and around 4 volts on balanced ones. That's all quite normal and standard. But if you want, you can switch to preamp mode and then you can control volume with this volume knob in the front. Now, I'll quickly connect it and talk a little bit more about the features. Now we have it powered. You can see that there is an LCD display in the front. Uh, it looks like LCD to me and not OLED, which is actually very nice because for devices that have displays that work all the time, OLED deteriorate quicker and it's prone to causing some sort of problems. Here they are using LCD and also uh, with remote control that is provided in the box, you can alter its brightness, which I quite like and currently it's on one of the lower settings actually. And when it comes to remote, just your normal function to power the unit off and on, to select sources, different sources, or to just enter the menu and maybe um, adjust some sort of filters and other things. But I'll not get too much into that. I'll just tell you that it does have a selection of digital filters for user to choose from and you should just browse through them, see if you hear anything, leave the one that you find the most suitable for your ears and that's basically it. And as I'm currently using it as a DAC only, it's set to fixed outputs and the volume level is fixed to the maximum, which is 80. When you switch to preamp, you can also control the volume via remote. That's all nice and easy to, to work with. So, for example, you could use this DAC as a DAC preamp to control your active speakers or something like that. I wouldn't recommend using this DAC as a preamp in a higher end setup because it's not all that good when you use this preamp, but for a some sort of entry-level system or maybe powered speakers that are not too expensive and too revealing, it would be like a nice minimalistic way of doing things. Oh yeah, and when it comes to build quality, it's quite nice really. The sides here that you see are made like this frame around the unit is aluminum, but the top is some sort of acrylic material. You see it's, it's very glossy and it's really a fingerprint magnet and dust magnet too. So everything it's on the unit, you'll see it if you, if you look at, at it from the certain angle. It really does look nice and stylish. And I also wouldn't worry that much about durability. You can freely put something on top of it, for example. Uh, when I actually listen to it in my system, I, I tend to put some weight on the top and I don't see it flexing or anything. So it is acrylic finish, but it feels sturdy enough. You can certainly put like a reasonably weighty 
device on top of it, no problem. You you know, it's it's not some sort of and yeah, if you see any movement that's from the box actually beneath it, but yeah, it, it feels sturdy enough to me. Oh, and yeah, last but not least, it actually has integrated Bluetooth connection. It works just fine and it's inferior to any sort of wired connection, as you would expect. So I didn't give it much thought. I tried it, it worked. It loses some details, it loses some definition to USB or coaxial connection. So choose if you want to use it, it's a convenience over quality. But yeah, it's there if you want it, that's nice. And the last part, this is MQA certified. That basically means that if you're using uh, some streaming service, for example, like Tidal, that are compressing high resolution files to save on data bandwidth, and again, decompressing that inside of the DAC, this DAC fully supported that. And a lot of people actually asked me, what is MQA? Is it better than normal high res file? And I wanted to say, no, it's not better. MQA is basically a compression of high resolution file that aims to save bandwidth for streaming provider. It does nothing for you as a user. It's just a saving measure. It's, um, in my experience, MQA file streamed from Tidal, for example, sounds better than standard resolution file like CD. It sounds a little bit richer, a little bit better, but it cannot match to a real high resolution file, uncompressed, high bitrate, high res file. So for example, like Cobuzz streaming services offering, they're not compressing, you don't need MQA for their streaming service and it sounds better. So, okay, it's a nice touch if you're a Tidal user, but it's nothing to fuss about. But okay, anyway, you have it here and let's move to the sound quality. Now, first thing, when I put it in my system, I connected it to my Cyrus integrated amp, Cath LS50 speakers, and digital sources Raspberry Pi with Allo Digi One Spidif hat. So I noticed, first of all, it really sounds precise and clean and basically everything that you would expect uh, 800 bucks DAC to sound. And um, the house signature is also noticeable immediately. For example, I recently reviewed on the other end of the price spectrum, SMSL Sanskrit 10th MK2. You maybe saw that video. And I mentioned there that that DAC sounded a little bit fuller and a little bit warmer than its direct competitor topping E30. So the same character also carries to this DAC. It's a little bit warmer, smoother sounding DAC, but of course better sounding than their entry level offering. So how is it better sounding? Well, it has deeper sound stage. Everything is just layered much better. And if you feel with entry level DAC that layering and sound stage is good, this one is just super sized you have a little bit more depth, instruments are separated a little bit better, there's more room in between instruments and around the singers, everything is a little bit airier, it breathes a little bit easier. It's also more dynamic, microdynamics too. Everything is a little bit snappier, a little bit more agile, and yeah, if you have a really good system, that can actually benefit from it. You don't really need to try hard to notice the difference. This is a higher end DAC and it's easily noticeable. But that said, how does it actually sound in its class and what I like about it, what I don't like maybe? Okay, so let's start with the bass region. It's slightly warmer but it's quick enough, it's speedy enough. You, you, if you imagine some sort of warm and sluggish and lazy bass, it's not like that. It's quick, it's snappy, 
rhythm is followed really precisely and nicely, but every note, and that especially goes for some sort of upper bass, feels like slightly warmed, slightly padded. And that also extends to the mid-range. Now, mid-range is really lush, it's full, and it's again on, on slightly warmer side. But it, 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 is, it feels like it's slightly padded with that upper bass section. And what that means is, for example, when singer sings, the vocal is really centered. It's really positioned strongly in the center, up front, it's big. You feel that voice is full, it's lush, there's a lot of body to it. And it has sort of a liquid character to it. It's never harsh, it never feels mate or bumpy in any way, scratchy. It's just full and lush and like liquid-like. But that leads me to higher spectrum, starting from like upper mid-range. And that is the part where most of the te tone texture resides. So, for example, if you listen to a singer like Leonard Cohen, and he has a lot of that huskiness and just roughness in his voice, this DAC smooths that a little bit. It's not really that eager to dig a lot of texture and to present it to you. So, anything that, that resembles to like sandy sound or crackly sounds, raspy sounds, are going to be a little bit smoothed. Like, like you took a little bit of honey and you glazed those notes. Now, it's not a lot. It's not like some really sweet and warm mess. As I mentioned, this is actually a really snappy, precise sounding back, but it, it just adds that sort of honey glaze on top of tones and textures, and I think that mostly goes for upper mid-range. And I feel that's why a lot of reviewers mentioned that it's rolled off on the top end. I actually don't think that's the case. Um, because when I listen to the highest spectrum, for example, this recording, it's uh, quite new, uh, recorded this or last month, really atmospheric, just a singer and her guitar and a lot of atmosphere. You know, you hear the moment that microphone turns on and you hear the air all the way through the song. And when I listen it through SMSLM 400, I definitely feel there is enough air around the singer. There is enough of that top end light. It's not like dark imaging, but what's actually missing, it's a little bit of that texture that comes from maybe upper, mid-range, lower, high-end, some of raspiness, some of texture. It's really smooth, it's really liquid-like, sweet sounding basically. And because of that, I feel that some of you could miss that, that last zing, you know, the, the, just a little bit of edginess and a little bit of texture and um, huskiness from some vocals or some instruments, like sax, for example, you know, because it's a mix of those two, of, of full bodiness and that huskiness. And um, oddly enough, this is a Delta Sigma DAC. And usually people complain about these, that they're all about edges and all about sharpness, but they don't really take much attention about full bodiness and tone timbre. And here I feel that it's actually the opposite. Now, full bodiness is great. It's, uh, it's basically comparable, for example, with shit modi multibit. It's just more precise, more nimble, more incisive sound. But mid-range full bodiness is great. Vocals and instruments, they do sound full, they sound lush, they sound liquid. There's a lot of aftertone when a note happens 
that aftertone vibration that's happening behind it is is present it's it's really nice it's like rich sounding back and if anything a little bit of that edginess and texture is missing here and for me that's really interesting it's fun it just shows that we shouldn't generalize backs and their sound signature just by their construction while on that topic interesting thing when directly compared to Danafrip's RS2 here that you might see behind me, which is R2R DAC, and people have prejudice that these sound too warm and too sweet, this one is actually warmer, it's smoother, it's sweeter, it's more honey glazed, while RS is the airier one, edgier one, and drier sounding. And I'll go more into details about it and compare them a little bit more when I do a full review of uh, RS2 here. And I really suppose that in blind tests, a lot of people would have difficulties determining which one is Delta Sigma, which one is R2R because, because of that. Finally, do I think this is a good DAC? Is it worth 800 bucks and would I recommend it to my friends and to you? And the answer to that one would be mostly yes. I really think it's a really good DAC. It has much more qualities than it has shortcomings. And being really precise, being quite incisive, having really decent soundstage depth, and a lot of tone body, a lot of tone richness, and also a lot of tone reverb clearly puts it above all entry-level DAX that I mostly tested here on this channel. There is no chance, if you have a good system, that you will mistake this one with a 2 or 250 bucks DAC. Forget the measurements and things like that. So this is simply a better device and you can easily hear that. But if you have 800 bucks or something similar and you want to spend that for the best possible DAC, is this it? It depends, it really depends. So if you have a little bit sharp analytical, maybe system that scratches your ears a little bit and it's tiring, this could be just the cure for it. Now I won't go into that if maybe you should check something else in your system, but let's say it sounds like that and you need a new source, this one would match greatly. It would just give that amount of smoothness and, and sweetness that would suit really well in those type of systems. But if you feel that your system is already a little bit on the sweet side, on the warm side, this one would just add to it and tip it even more to that side. And in, in those cases, you would probably agree more with uh, Dana Fripp's RS2 here. But personally, I, I do like this type of voicing. And if you watched my previous reviews, for example, you saw me that I quite liked shit modi multibit, which is R2R on chip. And that one also has this sort of rich, tonally rich sound that is that is focusing on mid-range, especially lower mid-range. But if anything, uh, multibit has a little bit rougher, higher frequencies. This one is even smoother sounding, even more liquid sounding. But it is more precise, it is more nimble, it hits with greater intent and with more precision than multibit. So of course that one is like three times cheaper, so it's not really fair competition, but I'm just comparing sound signatures here. So if you, like me, tend to like that type of voicing, I think you would be quite happy with this DAC. Because it's basically mostly neutral, but slightly leaning towards warmer and sweeter. Not overwhelmingly so. And if I would have to choose between equally good DACs, and one leans to that 
slightly sweeter side, while the other one leans to slightly sharper and more analytical side, I would always choose the sweeter one. Because in the end, I listen to the music to enjoy it, I'm not listening it professionally to find faults in the recordings. It has enough details, enough precision, and enough of everything that basically if you're just upgrading, you might not ever even notice that slightly sweeter sound signature unless you compare it to something more neutral directly. And um, yeah, one last thing, uh, everything that I mentioned actually goes for single-ended outputs because that's the only way I can test it currently. I don't have an integrated amplifier with balanced inputs, so I cannot test these. I hope I will be able sometimes in the future. So yeah, the, the more the channel grows, um, the more I'll be able to invest in different options for different types of testings and such, but yeah, so far this is it. Um, really great DAC, I, I feel it's a really nice product, and um, I never heard more affordable DACs sounding this good, so that's it. You'll basically simply have to decide is that type of voicing good for you, and do you think you would like it or not? And for those of you who are upgrading from some really entry-level device, like maybe 100, 200, 300 bucks, is this one worth it? I cannot say that. If you, if you have a really good system, if you're like aspiring audiophile, it is. It does sound better, it does sound more precise, more spacious. By how much, I cannot tell percentages, I cannot tell numbers really. It is an uphill battle. You do pay significantly more for relatively small differences. But in my experience, a lot of small differences, like a little bit more precise bass, a little bit cleaner, crisper edges, a little bit lusher vocals, a little bit more soundstage depth and width. In the end, when, when you combine all of that, at least to my ears and, and, and to my brain, it really does bring more listening pleasure. Again, I repeat, if the rest of your system can follow it. Yeah, you might notice that I'm actually commenting uh, about some really cheap entry-level DACs and this one is like a higher um, end option. Yeah, because I'm like budget audiophile, because most of the reviews I viewed about this unit, they called it entry-level DAC, you know, like Thomas and Stereo or J, I think, from Next Best Thing or something like that. Yeah, they, they, they are really like at the higher end of the hi-fi food chain and they call this entry level, but in my mind, it's not really. Um, we, we do have quite decent DACs for substantially lower amount of money. And this one is great for its price. I think it, it justifies its price, but I wouldn't call it entry-level DAC. Not in my world <laughs> and not in my country, definitely. So thank you for watching this, guys. I hope you liked it and see you next time.